conversations about that coming up next month, by the way. Okay, here goes our agenda into the chat. Uh, um, next month, Daryl is going to be giving a presentation on Google Ads um, with more than a little bit uh, on marketing you know, the precursors for paid ads, but there will be a strong focus on Google lead ads. All right. Well, I'd say we have enough people here to at least start doing some introductions. So shall we start with you, Travis? I'm seeing you uh, first on my, my array here, my Brady Bunch grid. We got, uh, what, twice as much so as you last month. Well, that's the, that's the idea. You know, we're doing um, more. We do have four people. I, I know Mike was there. Uh, well, I mean, we've got 970 people in our in this group. Yeah. And um, I would hate to see that many people show up. Oh, but yeah. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be management nightmare. I would love to get to the point where we could actually, like, break up into, into groups by topic. Um, and, and that sort of thing. But in the meantime, uh, why don't we start with some intros? Uh, you know, uh, take a minute or two and tell us who you are, where you are, what it is you do, and why you're here. If you have any ideas for a group moving forward, um, maybe tell us what's your biggest WordPress or uh, business hurdle. Uh, anyway, let's start with Travis. Travis from Escondido, California. And uh, I am self-taught WordPress. I have my own e-commerce site. Um, I'm constantly learning and uh, having to figure out everything as I go. Um, so. Uh, and your product is? I do laser engraving. Um, and so. Um, I'm, I'm free, by the way, to... everybody feel free to put your contact information, put your website address, put your email, whatever it is. You know, like I'm sure you could use more business. So, yeah. So, Ed, I got a question right, right under. You know, I'm looking at the screen here with everybody on it, and then right so, on under you, you've got your name and then um, some other information. Where do you yeah, where do you sure. put that in? Um, and if then Charles, you got CP web web designs there, and I'm I'm like, uh, yeah, really, just really quick. Um, now I have that entered into my actual account. So whenever I use this account, it always shows up, but you, you ought to have the ability and, and maybe confirm for me, Daryl, uh, do they have the ability to change their names right now? Yes, just in a meeting, if you hit dot, dot, dot in the upper right-hand corner, you can change what it says just for this meeting. Uh, I'm more of a Google I, Meet guy. Just so, FYI, yeah, I, Edward. Yeah, when I set up my Zoom, I like to open the participants window and also the chat because in the participants window there are going to be options, especially for yourself, like rename, what have you, and you can go ahead and, and I encourage all of you whenever you attend a Zoom meeting, it's all about brand. Put your brand out there. You know, uh, have ways for people to find you because if you're if you're bringing value to the group, that's what make people want to seek you out. Oh, we got somebody else in the oh, Magic Whale is back. All right, I like that guy. Um, so anyway, um, I hope that answered your question, Travis. Are you able to rename yourself and put some? Uh, I didn't find it in the three dots there. So you have your participants open. Also in the right. You, to, you go right over your camera over yourself. Yeah, look at your own view. It may be hidden, but if you if you hover your cursor over the top right. Yeah, should... I, I got the three dots, but I just don't see. It's not... it, it says rename. That's all it says oh, at rename. the very bottom. Gotcha. That's I'm, it. I'm, by the way, I'm, I'm co-hosting you, Daryl. Um, all right. Are we good there, Travis? Yeah, got it. Someone wants in. Were you Sorry. done? Yeah, you can admit them too now. Trish, I think she's been here before. Um, 
Were you done with your uh, introduction, Mike? I'm sorry, Travis? Yeah, yeah, I am. Let's go on to Charles. All right, good evening. Uh, my name's Charles. I'm based out of San Antonio, Texas, as of two years ago. Uh, Full-time web developer for a small company out of New England called Walkin' Pets. Um, and I do freelance web design as CP web designs. Uh, my background is core core backend languages, so PHP, Cold Fusion, Perl. Uh, do front end stuff, um, and I've been doing WordPress and WooCommerce since I'm going to say 2020. Uh, any um, anything? Any ideas for our group, or uh, want to tell us why? Uh here uh, well this is my first time in this group but i i try to participate in mike's group every wednesday the uh, woo wednesday group um that happens to hit around my lunch time so i can take the time to participate in that one yeah thumbs up mike <laughs> um so i typically don't do any of these later <laughs> evening ones i mean you guys are all on or most of these groups are on the West Coast. You know, I'm central, so it's uh, it's already 8 o'clock. And if I was still in New Hampshire, it would be like 10 o'clock. So, um, but anyways, I'm just branching out, finding other groups to participate in to see what they're talking about. When we first started this group, um, one of the first things that we got nailed down was when we were going to be meeting. And uh, we did have people in Central and in on the East Coast, and we decided a happy medium because a lot of people are still at work if we do it earlier than 6 p.m. If we do it I later, found that there's a lot of EST groups. So it's great because there's a large population there, but when you're Pacific time, it usually falls in around dinner or some odd time, and they're, they can be difficult to attend. So yeah, there's always an overlap time. Yeah, there's no perfect time for everybody in the world, you know, especially now that Zoom has us uh, speaking to people everywhere. The Zoom meetings that I'm in routinely have people from Australia and Indonesia, Bali, uh, the UK, definitely. And it's, you know, how do you pick a perfect time for them? Well, somebody's going to have to be up at 2 a.m. if they're in the, U in the UK, you know, and somebody's going to have to be up <laughs> at 4 a.m. if they're uh, I can't keep them all straight. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it's trickier too. If it's a regular business networking, you could find the time right in the middle usually. But if it's an after hours thing, because people have a regular full time job and things like that, yeah, it's a little trick. It's hard not to have something in the evening to make accommodate everybody. Yeah. yeah. Hey, since so. you're speaking, Mr. Oberg, uh, why don't you give your introduction? I'm Daryl Oberg. I'm based out of Kelowna, BC. It's a small lakeside city in Canada. Space and side. Small space side city today. <laughs> I am. Yes. I'm the marketing consultant. My main area of expertise is in the strategy and execution of paid ads. Uh, Google and LinkedIn ads are my main one. Social, I know enough to make them work. But as a whole, yeah, I help. What does your business need to grow and bring in the right people? And I come in and I more specifically really dial in the paid and make sure everything else from a high level is working towards it. So that's why I work with Edward. He's got some overlapping. It's, yeah, they're, they, everyone works together. It's an overlapping resource. So that's what I do. And I've yeah, done e -com, lead generation. I've done a whole bunch of stuff. Anywhere from thousand a month to thirty, you know, up. So, yeah. What else? I guess that's about it. And if you want WordPress questions, there's other experts here, and they know way more than me, and I go to them. <laughs> Next person. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, I, and just looking at my grid. Uh, well, I believe I believe uh, Mike and Lance came in next. Uh, I want to I want to try to get people in the order they got here. Mike, you want to jump in and tell us who you are and what you do and why you're so damned awesome? 
<laughs> well, thank you for rounding up on that one. Yeah, I'm Mike Pocan. I run a weekly WooCommerce meetup called uh, Woo Wednesdays, which a couple in this group are regular attendees. I also do a monthly WordPress meetup, kind of for beginners and intermediates. And I manage about a dozen websites. Um, I'm really, my interest and my skill set is more in pure business, but the last decade or so, it's any business initiative requires a website. Uh, nobody's going to the yellow pages anymore. So I've gotten pretty deep in the WordPress space over the last decade. And that's me. Thanks for hosting, Ed. No, you bet. Thanks for being here, Mike. Always good to see you. Um, so who's, I think Lance was the next one that who showed up. Lance? I am Lance. Um, I'm on the East Coast, uh, outside of uh, New Haven, Connecticut. I make websites for people. That's what I do with WordPress. Been doing it in about 10 years. That's it. Short and sweet. I have no problem with that. Uh, how about, uh, was it uh, Hetty? Were you the next one that showed up? I don't know, but I can go next. Go uh, ahead. You guys are a bunch of pros here. I am not a pro but my background is actually in creative direction and design. Um, I've designed a lot of websites, but it was back in the old days when you worked with the developer and I don't have any idea what they did to do that. Um, currently, I am a CEO of a biotech startup and I have a bunch of sites inexplicably, like my mom's website and my company website and none of them have too many pressures on them, but I just need to get them to a certain level. And so that's why I'm here. I'm thrilled that you guys all seem, you know, not like me. I'm a complete newbie. I've set things up. I'll actually put my website addresses here. I set things up just by the skin of my teeth. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I went away. And now I don't remember how I did it. And I have to go back in and change things. And so I was just hoping I don't want to suck air out of this room, but I want to observe and sort of maybe hopefully learn by osmosis and figure it out. Well, let me let me first of all clear the air on why we're here. I mean, no one's at the exact same point in their evolution on WordPress. You know, we all started somewhere and we're all somewhere now and hope to get somewhere else. Um, so this group is for people who are interested in WordPress and whether we're complete amateurs at it or people who have been doing it for a while, we all have issues. We all have questions, we can all be taught, um, and we all can be guided, and we can always uh, form alliances with, you know, like Daryl and I have been uh, talking a lot about marketing and, and that sort of thing. And he's taught me a lot, you know, because I'm, when it comes to uh, placing ads and things like that, that is far from my forte, you know. So, um, yeah, you're, you're in the right place. Okay. And don't worry about where you are because next week you're going to be further ahead than you are today. You might Thank be, you. you might be able to pass on, you know, uh, some wisdom that you're garnering right now as a, you know, a newbie, um, mm -hmm. for somebody else who just went through the, the exact same thing. Cause we must, we got to keep in mind, WordPress is ever evolving. They're always changing the, 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 the core. They're always changing the interface. Uh, Gutenberg, uh, the editor, uh, is constantly in flux. Um, and that came in after I started. So I oh, did oh, and Divi oh. and I mean, that happened after and I was doing a WordPress meetup. So I just want to say, forgive me. And also I just put my websites in and I didn't even put them in a clickable fashion. <laughs> Typical newbie era, but sorry about that. But no yes, worries. so but I, I um, there, people here can can make that work. Figure it out. <laughs> sorry, but um, my mother is um a poet, and sh and she has a book that she sells, and I just wanted to do this for her, and I'm realizing I need to go to this WooCommerce meetup because I set it up. I have no, I don't remember how I did it, but. You know, with shipping and international, I set it up and it seems to be working, but I forget what I did. But that's a WooCommerce issue, is it? So that's a different meetup. I, f I find that taking good notes, you know, one of the things, and, and I'm ADD, I'll, uh, you know, full disclosure. So it's really helpful for me to 
to take copious notes. And I've never regretted ever taking too many notes. You know, I mean, I will sit there, even if I'm doing updates for a client, I will go and I can do it fairly quickly. I'm a fast typist, but I will go through through the list, which allows me to keep track of what was done, what, you know, I can put it in their invoice. Um, you know, uh, notes are really great ways. I mean, at some point in time, you might find yourself uh, monetizing your efforts, Hetty. Um, am I saying that right, Hetty? Hetty, yes. You, like you that's actually quite remarkable. That is how you see my name, and nobody ever says it. I know it's not Headley because I've seen Blazing Saddles. Um, <laughs> I've heard that joke. <laughs> You had to see the movie. The movie is not yeah. politically acceptable in today's landscape. Oh, I know it's not, is it? But let's not go down that road. Time. Yeah. Mike and I will have that conversation later. So um, many classics that would not make it today. So, I mean, uh, the entire Mel Brooks catalog basically could not yeah. have 2023, which is one of the, one of the great tragedies. But anyway, uh, we're not here for that. Magic will. Hello. Well, it's good to see you again, sir. You're good all purple, you. man. I am. I am. I'm all purple. Um, and when I came to this meetup for the first time last month, I was in East Coast time, and now I'm in Central time. So I'm working my way to the West. Maybe Where is it you live? Uh, Minnesota. I'm in Minnesota now. Okay. Which is, um, what is it? Central? Central. It's Central. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And, and yeah, I started my career in WordPress. Um, almost eight years ago now, uh, working for an online learning company. And that's what I've been doing for eight years, starting to integrate more into the WordPress uh, community as a whole. The mic's really quiet. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm not, oh, no I noticed that. Is it just me? It is a bit on the, yeah. I, mean, I can hear him, but it is. Oh, I just hear him. I have to turn the sound up. Then if someone else speaks, it's loud. It's, it's a little yeah. bit. Yeah. If you can, I'll turn it up. Just want to give you a heads up. It's a little faint. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can turn it up here on the interface. Is that a bit better? That's much better. Yeah, perfect. Cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, so started my career almost uh, the better part of a decade ago working for an online learning company, and that's what I've been doing since. Still surprised I'm able to support myself making money in WordPress. Great. And that brings us to Trish. Trish, I see your avatar. Are you with us? Hi. Yeah, uh, let me uh, start my video. There you go. Uh, except it's closed. There we go. Hi. There you are. Uh, I'm not sure if I've ever been to this group before. You, you kind of, some of you look a little familiar, but if it, I was, it was a while ago. Um, I used to do, um, you know, kind of freelance work and do WordPress sites, but, and I've, you know, over the years, over the pandemic, uh, clients disappeared businesses closed and i only have a handful left but they're really old and i just recently was trying to move hosts to hopefully save some money because my hosting costs went way up and um i found that there was a whole bunch of problems with these old sites and i i i would i i, I so i guess i'm that's kind of what i'm interested in doing is figuring out how do i rebuild these sites uh, the modern way, uh, do I just throw it all out and start over or is there a way to convert them? That's one question that I had. And then, um, yeah, and I haven't really been working that much, but I want to get back into it and um, s start working with, with WordPress more. I was doing a lot of um, uh, coursework over the um, yeah pandemic, I guess, Zoom stuff, um, trying to become more of a front end web developer, you know, kind of full stack and front end. And I realized it was just a little bit over too much for me. You know, I, I, I just can't seem to get JavaScript down. Um, I can, I recognize it. I know what to do to change certain things. It's kind of the same how, how I am with PHP. I'm just not a programmer. I'm maybe more like, like, um, was it Hetty? Um, you know, more design and visual and that kind of thing. But anyway, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And, um, you know, I'd love some suggestions on where to go with my existing sites. And then I also want to, you know, start building up some, some more clients and stuff too. So. 
Thanks. Thanks for doing this. Oh, you bet. We're glad you guys are all here. So that leaves me. I'm Edward Sanchez. I'm here in San Diego, and it's good to have some other Californians in the room tonight, uh, just up the road, in fact. Irvine, and, and where was it that you were at, Trisha? Trish? San Diego. I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't notice you were over there, and I saw. I see it now. You're in San Diego oh, and Escondido. Wow. Was yeah. It, it's in Ir who was in Irvine? Oh no, we've got Travis in Escondido. Didn't we have somebody in, uh, uh, no, uh, not Irvine. Uh, Lance, where are you at? I'm in Connecticut. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's uh, uh, I'll finish my introduction. I've got a company called Brass Ring Web Design. Um, and, uh, and that's kind of a misnomer by, by today's standards because, I mean, yes, at the heart of what I do is web development, but I've also been involved in the WordPress world for 14 years now. And um, one of the great things about WordPress is it allows us to spend less time in the actual development of the website and more time on making sure it's the right website, more emphasis on the marketing and also on the planning for what happens after the site is launched. Because I mean, for years I've been building websites since 98 and for years, I would just build the site, move on, you know, make sure they, they can get hold of me when they wanted to change the phone number or they wanted to add something, whatever. And it was usually a matter of just leaving websites in the in the in my path um, that were destined to to remain st um, static, you know, archaic uh, before long. And of course, we don't live in those times. You know, nowadays Google will give us penalties for not keeping fresh content. So I spend much more time making sure that my clients can keep their sites relevant, keep the traffic coming um, by providing great content, and also working with email marketing, uh, people like Daryl. Um, to, to be doing uh, more advanced marketing, the pay per marketing, because that's the world we live in. If you're not spending money driving traffic to your website, you better be out there doing some old school marketing and doing, you know, the print, doing the networking, doing a lot of content creation. Because I mean, you can, <clears throat> if you if you're putting out a lot of content, you're gonna you can make up for some of what people spend money on, but for the average person who isn't, you know, at least at the level that I work with, people aren't creating a crap ton of content. So that means what content you do create needs to have a little financial push behind it. So I encourage you all to come here uh, next month, uh, the second um, day of the, is that the 13th? I forget the date exactly, but um, the 11th. Next, is it? Is it also the 11th? That can't be. I think so. Not today's the 11th. It's a beat up, sad. The next month. Or the 8th? No. Oh, it's the 8th. Never mind. 8th. I'm sorry. Uh, it's the second birthday. It's on. The, it's on Meetup. It's the 8th. No, nah, Google Calendar was being a little slow. Uh, yeah, it's going to be on the 8th and, and Daryl's going to be talking more about paid advertising because if you're not doing it, um, if you're not uh, uh, budgeting, this is something that I've, I've had fall on my head, not budgeting enough of my, <clears throat> of my web design income on keeping the traffic coming. And that's kind of death nowadays. So. Anyway, so uh, let's move on. We had a couple of topics that were kind of put out. We had, uh, well, Hetty had some general topics about uh, WordPress. Uh, we also had Trish who brought up a topic of um, old sites. And that is something that I've, I've just recently had my first client die. Uh, my, my very first commercial WordPress client and um, you know, I, I like working with, with older folks. Well, now I am one, but, uh, but I, uh, I had one gentleman in his, in his eighties who just passed away. So there's a lot of old sites uh, that people haven't spent a lot, a lot of money on. 
Um, of course, I would always spend a little extra time on that website and give them extra discounts and stuff like that because I didn't want to see the website get too left behind in terms of technology that might uh, that might break the site that sort of thing but also uh, uh, wanting to make sure that it was safe and a lot of the uh, archaic sites will find themselves being and from from a hygiene health and hygiene of the website standpoint there are risks involved in letting your site go too long certainly if you haven't updated um, your your plugins and your your core software your your themes things like that there are risks involved in that but anyone want to make a, a, a statement about um, how you deal with with older sites do you, uh, Trish asked the question is it better to to start a new site or or try to patch up the old sites are you talking about clients or your own site well, she said that she's got a couple of clients who have she's she's dealing with old sites right right that they yeah. haven't mm -hmm. dated, so is it is it better they, they haven't put any effort or you know money or anything into them i just kept hosting them it kind of started during the pandemic and and I, you know i'm i'm sort of thinking like wait a minute i oh. should like do something with these sites for them and, you know they have small businesses they're doing okay they don't you know, they need a website for their business, but they aren't really interested in social media or marketing or anything. They don't. don't well, Charles is being all polite and raising his hand. So I think, uh, and and I would love to get to the point where we have so many people that we're going to be using our virtual hands. So Charles, you want to yeah. address Trish? I try to do that because some of the other groups, people just trounce all over each other and oh, it gets I very, know. very annoying. Um, so... It. I guess I guess Kason or first question to ask is are they paying you to actually maintain it? Um, you know, if they paid you to build it, but that was it. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's really worth your somewhere time. Somewhere in between. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I mean, they want to. They want okay. like, they've said like <clears throat> yeah, and I just stopped billing them because they weren't doing anything. And I, I should have been like at least for the hosting and stuff, but and and some of them have said, like, how come you know, send me a bill, I'll pay you. But and it, Apparently, I don't need the money that much. But <laughs> I know I really I'm, do. But I, I'm the same I, way. I, yeah, I got a couple yeah. of sites that you know I I charge for the initial setup, and I remind them about their uh, domain registration fees. Yeah. But that's about it right now. But anyways, um, so first thing you need to do for each site is you need to get an inventory. You know, you need to know what version you're currently running, what all the plugins are, what versions those are, and if they can even be updated, you know, plugins do disappear out of the repository, you know, people stop maintaining them and they just fall off. So, you know, if that's the case, you know, then you're going to have to find an alternative for those pieces that won't update. Um, but I would definitely recommend making a backup. Um, if you've got a machine that you can do like a local dev server, um, import their site into the dev server um, and try to do all the updates you need to there. Um, the content, depending on how old the WordPress is, you know, the content should migrate. It's just the plugins, you know, depending on how old they are and whether they're still maintained is going to be the biggest piece. Yeah, That's would, my two cents. Yeah, I would add to, oh, and this is universal. Keep in mind that these different plugin companies and theme companies are not all sitting in the same room testing every possible permutation of those of those interactions. Um, so a big part of what you do with WordPress is, well, of course, make sure everything's backed up, backup, backup, backup. That's, you know, for the especially for new people, yeah. you've got that because there is never any guarantee um that an update is not going to break something you know not all development teams stay up to date uh that being said also um you know uh, even if it's if it's an older site it's almost guaranteed that you're going to have some sort of issue the, the older it gets so do you know how to raise your hand virtually there eddie i do i didn't know if that seems silly 
<laughs> okay. I, I mean, I, I actually I got, know. I haven't done it before, but Mike, I think I know. Oh, it went away. Mike's reactions. So let's let's let him see if he's got an answer. Um, okay, um, I'm going to follow up on Chuck's comments. And, and as far as uh, head he's uh, looking for, it's under reactions there. You click on that and they'll pay it. Place to raise the hand. Just recognize. Oh, play chat. Play yeah. And so yeah, there's a little message. jelly face down at the bottom. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it says reactions. Or mm -hmm. you might click on that and get a bunch of options. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry, I was and clicking then, on the carrot. I got it. Yeah. Okay. So, like I'll lower my hand now. But anyway, I wanted to follow up on Trisha's initial question and follow up what Charles is saying. A lot of it is going to be site specific. It's really going to be what's going on with that site. I mean, if it's just a brochure site, it's not got any traffic. It's been working for years. It's probably going to keep working. You probably don't want to put a lot of money into it or time, especially if you're not getting paid. But if you're hosting for them, I would think you'd want to get something, you know, because uh, there, there's laws pending in California now that's making the developers responsible for some of the stuff going on with these websites. And I'll get to that in a minute. And that's one of the things I looked at. Hetty's two websites there, and I want to make a couple comments on that. But Trish, if you want have any websites you want to share for the group here, put them in the chat. We'll take a quick look at it. But the one thing I wanted to talk to Hetty about is that you're in California, and this accessibility and privacy stuff's a big yeah. deal. And they have, uh, and the loss really is just a setup for lawyers. They're just trolling these sites. And if you get a bad rating for accessibility or privacy policies, they'll sue you. And people are losing five, ten, twenty thousand dollars just trying to defend. And it, it it's just, you know, if if somebody delivers a newspaper to your doorstep, the newspaper isn't responsible if the person living there is blind and can't read it. But you have a website, they're going to say, oh, you're discriminating. You go into Home Depot, they don't make you do that. You go to Costco, they don't. But websites, you're, you're, you're caught. And in California, they're saying any site that can be viewed from California, this is the pending legislation right now. It's flying through committees that they not only can sue the company, person who developed that website gets sued too. So, and it's pretty easy to get these uh, privacy policies and these uh, accessibility taken care of. And your sites load pretty good. They don't look too bad, uh, but there's something called WP process or something. I'll think of it in a minute. Uh, oh, uh, the, the WP auto terms. It's a free plugin. Plug it gives you a template and then you can say what you do if you collect emails and whatever information. So if you're using Google Analytics, you're collecting information, you're supposed to disclose that. Uh, but anyway, there's another, a lot of people, the bigger companies will use someone called Termageddon, and they're about $100 a year. But what they do is they keep up on it. Um, your websites look a little bit smaller and, and just getting going. So I don't know if you need to spend a whole lot of money on that. But I do want you to be aware of that requirement, especially if you're living in California. Now, as far as your WooCommerce stuff, you're just selling a couple books, you might want to try selling digital books. I, I don't know. But that's pretty simple in, in WooCommerce. And you're right. The biggest challenge is uh, shipping and tax. And you can probably do it with just two books. You're probably going to be fine. Uh, but there are additional plugins that will extend your uh, tax treatment. So when you're selling in different jurisdictions, not really sure about when you're going overseas, how all that works. But in the continental United States, there's TaxJar, Cloudera. There's a bunch of them out there. That can really make it a lot easier for you, but you only have the two books, right? That mm -hmm. it's like on the on your mom's site, which incidentally, is she really 95 years old? No, she's 100. Wow, she looks great. <laughs> That's a very cool site. Anyway, I wouldn't want to hog the and we can come back to your website and look at a little bit more. But, but those are the main points I want to make right away about your two websites. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's some great genes to come from. Yeah, yeah, she's... You want to have longevity <laughs> ahead of you on the family tree. <laughs> so when I was raising my hand earlier, can I ask the question before we get too far off of what you were you were talking about backing up? May I ask, yes. I think it was Edward saying this or was it Mike? You were saying backup. Do you mean locally or through like the host? Well, that that is... First of all, you start by you have to have a backup. Now, this is going to also depend on your host. Um, and this is one area when you choose a host that you should use that as part of how you vet different hosts that have different 
uh, resources for backups, and some of them are transitioning. For instance, some web hosts used to do a daily snapshot for 30 days, and that was part of that was just part of what they do. A lot of them are starting to monetize that, where you have to pay an extra fee for that. Personally, I like to make sure that the website itself uses a backup plugin, something like Updraft or BackWP Up. There's others um, that people like. Um, it's all when it comes to back, you know, it's always about the 30,000 foot view. Um, vet your plugins. And the thing about the WordPress world is we are like everything else, like Amazon or anywhere, it's a five star world. I don't like to work with anything less than four stars. Sometimes I'll work with three stars. If, you know, if it's something that's niche, you know, um, you know, constant contact is a perfect example. Constant contact uh, wants you to use their their plugin, but their plugin gets like three stars, you know, so I'm not inclined to, to use it itself. There's other ways of of getting uh, email addresses into lists, but uh, make sure you vet them. Make sure that one of the plugins that you have is a um, uh, a backup plugin and a good backup plugin will give you options to either back it up to a cloud location. Most of them will allow you to put it on Amazon or on uh, Google Drive or any of a number of cloud resources. And, and I find it's usually best to uh, download a backup from time to time. I always download one at the beginning of a project um i download if it's a site that's already up i download one at launch and then i may download one from time to time if it's somebody that i'm I remain involved with but i i recommend every every website owner i mean i'm going to take this out of the side of my neck but i would say download a backup of your website every quarter maybe you know, I mean, that's the minimum that you want to go without updating your 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 software, your plugins, your theme, you know, I mean, as it happens or a little after it happens. This is where, you know, those of us who do this for a living, you know, this is where the ex experience comes in, because we've in a perfect world, you'd keep everything updated to the minute. But there's dangers in updating things to the minute because sometimes you know an update will break something, and uh, and then you've got that that big look of oh shit on your face. Pardon my French. Um, so like I like to wait a little while, you know, like a, a few weeks after an update, if it's a major update like the WordPress, before I uh, update things because chances are the smaller development teams are not going to be able to catch up with that. So yeah, as a, as new, new people, I would say, you know, do it every month or two, uh, because sooner you're, you may find some issues you don't like. Um, and same goes for waiting much longer than that. So. Most security professionals recommend triple black backup. If you have quality hosting, they're probably giving you backups automatically to the server on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. You know, depending on the importance of your material, some people will do it to a hard drive in case there's a fire or something. They'll put it in a safe and they'll do in that. Case, they, in the case of you some, probably of them, don't need to do it every day. No, I, I mine are set up to backup daily, but and I have free backup through my hosting company. So whoever's hosting your site, you should immediately check to see who they are and what what they're offering. Uh, a few of them will charge for it, but your quality hosting is giving free backups at the server level. And the thing is that some of the bigger ones, they'll start, you know, they'll start giving you a hard time if you have, because if, the, and this is where the size of your website is critical too. If you have a really large website, that's going to take, every time you do a complete backup, that's going to take up a lot of server space. So if you're tying, tying up all that server space 
on their hosting servers, they may come after you and say, hey, you know, uh, any, any number of things that I've seen from different hosting companies. So, but yeah, I think like WP Engine, Kinsta, I think they do incremental backups. I keep hearing about SiteGround a lot. I've not used them. How are they? I have, I think I have 10 sites of SiteGround. Uh, they, and I've yeah. only had to restore oh, yeah. a couple times that came right back up. So, so restoration was pretty, pretty smooth yeah. with them. Went pretty, it had to be reputable. Site ground yeah. I've used for years. I, I've, yeah. They're one of the top tier ones. I yeah. like them too. I use them. Yeah. I mean, there's reasons. To, some of the advanced experts have problems with site ground for a couple of reasons. And, um, and I wouldn't put them at the top, but I definitely put them at, at the value level because especially yeah. putting more than one site at one site after their introductory offer is a bit pricey, but you know, they give you an off on that mid middle plan. It's about $300 a year and you can put 10 sites on there. Now you're not doing 10,000 e-commerce transactions an hour at that level. You'll pay a lot extra, but for most sites, like what we're looking at here, no problem. It'll handle just well, not like liquid web or some of these other, you see that cost more the VP with the uh, VPS and dedicated server. Like they're oh, yeah. not at that <laughs> level. The yeah. one thing I liked about site ground, like, so green geeks is a, green geeks is okay. Not as good for the bottom. I was side, at, if it goes wrong, will their support fix stuff? Because I'm not a web person, and if a site breaks, I just want to build a message support to restore this, fix this. The SSL is broken. They'll just do it because uh, that's what I look at, especially if it's for a client. I don't manage sites anymore, but that's a, it helps. So if you're an average website user, they'll actually have their site grounds pretty knowledgeable. Their support staff. Their, their support's been really good. I'll agree with that. Um, I've spent a long time with somebody in Belarus or wherever they are. And yes. They will just sit there and talk to you live until it's done, or at least they used to. Um, I'm so happy to hear that. I mean, that is luck on my part that I landed with them. But um, I'm at the top level, but I do three years at a time. So it's $900 for the three years. So I guess you could say it amortizes that to 300 a year, which... I don't know if that's good or not. It's what I've been doing. I'm guessing they include an SSL with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that yeah, makes you get automatic better. backups at the server level, and you're probably using the SE optimizer there for server side caching. Because I noticed your, your website loaded pretty pretty quick. Oh, good. Oh it my seemed god. Seem to anyway. <laughs> and Trisha's, I, I looked at yours. Yours is loading pretty quick. It, it does look like something was built a while back. It, you don't image wise, but it. Looks pretty functional. You have a lot of content on it. So is that the gift that, for the call? Yeah, if you're gonna do some kind of upgrade or you're gonna to shift to a different theme or something, you would probably want to think about that. Yes. Uh, I don't yeah. recognize I didn't recognize the name of the theme that you're running, but it does say you're it's, running the latest WooCommerce already. The on that theme site. is doesn't exist anymore. That's why I have to oh. I have to oh, do right. something. The company's gone and they sunsetted it and so I'm gonna to have to do something else. And you know it's it's an old site anyway. So but you, you can get into the stuff. admin, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, then you can just load another theme. Yeah. And yeah. it's probably gonna. I definitely use one of the more modern, well-supported themes. Something like Astra or Cadence or Generate Press. Uh -huh. Something that's got hundreds of thousands of installs. Okay. You don't want to put a theme in there that's got fifty installs and hasn't been updated in two years. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. You want something. Yeah. Magic Will's got a hand yes. up. Go ahead, Will. Oh, yeah. I just had something really small to add to the idea of uh, backups and privacy policies is like if you are storing data in like a safe in like Irvine, California, you would also want to tell that in your privacy policy to disclose like, you know, your email and especially when collecting order information, disclosing where information's backed up is important too because that might be sensitive. Okay. I mean, that's like a small thing that a lot of people miss, but lawyers are going to get you on. One thing, you know, whenever, whenever I do anything, I try to simplify it. And one thing that I found is fairly reliable is to get my themes from Envato, uh, which is quite a, a great um, 
you know, uh, what would you call it? I mean, it's a, it's a resource for <laughs> all kinds of online tools, um, WordPress and beyond, you know, for other, for other CMSs and what have you. Um, but I like the fact that they have a reasonably reliable interface. You can, you can see um, by, by number of sales, you can see by, by customer uh, uh, review how the different, the various products are. And, uh, you know, by being on that platform, uh, developers are held to some degree of a standard because, um, um, you know, you can buy themes from all kinds of sources and including going direct to the theme producer. Um, you know, I, I touched the stove and got burned very early when I bought a theme that was that I found on the codex and I liked it. And I, I mean, this is when I had five minutes in the WordPress world and I paid 80 bucks for it. And within weeks, they removed support for it, uh, which meant that uh, there was not going to be any more releases. You know, that's the thing about the WordPress world. It's a very robust development community. However, there's a lot of people who just come out of computer, you know, they just got their, their degree in computer science. They go build a plugin, they go build an app, they go build something, and it's cool for five minutes, but unless they're going to be dedicated and committed to keeping that thing up to date and staying up to the latest standards, and be responsive to issues, you know, when their when their users have problems, that sort of thing, which is, I mean, the, the the amount of teams that will actually be able to maintain that. However, in the WordPress world, you can use the five stars. You know, you can, if you don't know about the codex, codex.wordpress.org is a good place to go because you can see there they'll give plugin or themes and well themes and plugins five-star rating you can see when it was last updated you can see well in some cases you'll see that they've removed support it's been way too long since uh, the team has updated that product so you want to be really careful about using something that's 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 old um but uh, sometimes i've had to uh just because it was really niche you know where real estate used to be really niche now there's all kinds of great real estate uh, themes and what have you but when i first started using it i had to you know like to, to have the uh, the multiple listings included on the website it wasn't as as easy as it is today and that sort of thing so vet everything well make sure that they're they're keeping it updated and responding any other any other concerns uh Trish or Hetty or well, I, and also there's, there's, developer about... issues. there's also developer issues. If we have any developer issues, you know, the people that are having a, or if you want to report something, something that you've experienced with a hosting company or with a particular development team, you know, please bring it to the fore. About that question though, you were just talking about up, you know, um, sites that are no longer supported. I do have another site, it's password protected, so I didn't put it here and it's actually probably my most active, but um, it is no longer supported. I went back to see if there were new versions and it said, I mean, they just basically went under, I got it from Theme Forest. Does that mean I need to change it if it's not broken? I mean, should I run away from it right away or just leave it until something bad happens? It, it, well, let's just put it this way. It's It's got a fuse on it. Uh, <laughs> when that fuse will run out is anybody's guess yeah. you know right now the theme that i've used for years did a completely a complete paradigm shift and uh i know uh, i'm what i need to do is redo all those sites that are using it because they're on it they're on a fuse you know i mean they now require elementor and, and i don't like to use elementor i don't like to slow my sites down and, and and that sort of thing but um you know and as far as you know and this kind of answers trisha's question when it comes to whether you redo a site or or uh just 
try to patch up the old site. I mean, that's a, that's a call. And part of the call is how good your skills are for for taking a site and moving it. But understand that that editing a site that's up personally, I find it better to make a copy of the site, put it in a sandbox, you know, have a make a, an exact copy of it, go work on that and then keep the site uninterrupted and and working well because once you start making changes if you make a change that you're unable to restore back to where it was and it breaks a site that can have real ramifications so i like to make a copy get that new site or or start from scratch because a lot of times it's easier to start from scratch and just migrate the content than it is to to work on a, on a live site you know and I hate to put a site, you know, put up the coming soon, you know, or under construction for four weeks, you know, because um, I mean, a, a good build, especially if you're doing, if you're remarketing, because if that site is 15 years old, their business model may have entirely changed and it might be time to re-ask a lot of those, those questions. Anyway, enough out of me. You guys take it. Travis has got his hand up. Go ahead and unmute. How's that? There you are. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, something that uh, pop popped up recently on my site, um, and, and this specifically with WooCommerce, it, it, and I'll read it, it says the WooCommerce legacy REST API will be removed soon. Um, can somebody tell me what that is and uh, what do I have to do or anything? I, I can comment on that. I bet he can take it. There you so go. So they had an, and I, I want to follow up on the on the themes and plugins that are outdated too. But the what happened was it was actually last year they have the legacy API and then they have a brand new API which is more robust. Most people are using the current API, but there are a few sites out there. Like if you're using Printful, I think Printful actually updated, but you're doing some of these other vendors and they didn't update to the new API and that's causing some sites problems with the sites. Now they have an extension plugin out there to temporary for the next few months so that if the vendor you're using didn't update to that new API, they got a bit of a bridge and I can get you a link to that. But eventually- What do you mean, what do you, what do you mean by vendor? Well, let's just say you have a WooCommerce site and you're selling t-shirts right? And you're using Printful or you're using some other vendor. And so that vendor didn't update their API to the new WooCommerce. And that's where you're having conflicts, okay. right? So now you're doing your, all your own engraving. Correct. Should, Every, right. Everything on my site is is my own products. You shouldn't have a problem at all. You should just use, use the new API, which is out and has been out for a while. But what they're warning everybody is they're going to abandon support for that legacy API. Shouldn't affect you at all. Okay. So, so the the REST API is if if I my site like you said on T-shirts was connecting to the T-shirt company site, a, a third party, right? A third party site. Okay. Yeah. Now it could be that could happen with shipping if you're using a shipper or something. There is actually one one plugin um, I'm using. It's called Fancy Product Designer, um, and uh, I saw something in that recently that that referred to that. REST API. Um, so there's I, only a few yeah. vendors out there that haven't updated. That's the only um, plugin that I have that reaches out to another site. Yeah, you might ask them if they're up to date on the API, but my guess is you're probably not really in the danger zone. It's probably low probability you're going to have and a problem. What 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 would I see when if it stops working? Just, oh, your orders won't go through. Okay, right. It'll be it, it'll just you know, I can't say exactly what's going to happen, but almost all of these third parties have updated their plugins and all their, their services to this new API. This new API has been out for a year and a half. But WooCommerce is letting everybody know, hey, time's no. up. We're not going to support the old legacy anymore. That's what that's about. Okay. Okay. And then getting back to the question on the uh, up an outdated theme, and this goes for plugins too, 
most of your updates are security patches. So if you have a theme that hasn't been updated for four or five years, there could be all kinds of back doors where they'll get inside and inject malicious code. You may not wake up one day and you don't even have control of your website. That's the danger of having these old unsupported themes because they're not, because there's patches coming every year. I, I, I mean, I do a meetup and every week we've got new vulnerabilities and new hacks coming. And so if you've got an old theme and hasn't been updated for four or five years, I'd strongly encourage you to go ahead and get a, a modern theme, well-supported, look at the number of installs, make sure there's a good community. A community. If it hasn't been updated in, in six months, you, you, you probably don't want to use that uh, that theme. You, you don't want to leave an old theme sitting out there. And I think Edward said it's like a, a live fuse. So these, yeah. these bots will crawl these websites. And the next thing you know, they, they're injecting code, in your, code into your footers and your headers. And, and next thing you know, porn's showing up on your website or you're, or you're taking bets in Jamaica, right? Gambling, whoever, whatever it is. You, you don't want that. Or you're, a, watching, or you're watching porn from Jamaica. Yeah. yeah. And also, you know, uh, like I use the word fence uh firewall typically on my websites but word fence uh i don't believe goes outside of the website so if you do have what i would suggest for trish if you've got these old sites you always want to start from from health and hygiene so first you want to before you do anything you you make a complete backup and and make sure it's a complete backup that includes the database um so you have that safety. Um, and then you might wanna consider contacting your web host. And a lot of the web hosts are using a, a security product like Security or something like that, which will actually scan the entire hosting account. And um, you know they'll, they'll have different levels with different levels of monitoring and uh, you know different levels of where they will include automatic uh, or automatic restoration is part of it, but a lot of them will have at a lower level, you can have, you can do a complete manual scan of the entire hosting account. So you can go through, because I mean, I remember doing a website for China. Well, San Diego sister city is Yantai in China. And I did a, a, a website for them while I was building that website back in the days when GoDaddy was much more useful they contacted me to let me know that the 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 old site that i was replacing had been hacked and i had 48 hours to make repairs you know and i went in there and i found uh, i think in that case i found somebody had put a bunch of wells fargo spoofing stuff because that's one of the ways hackers operate they will they may not mess up your website but they'll they'll piggyback on your hosting and take advantage of the fact that you're not keeping it secure and they'll put they'll run an entire spoofing operation off of your server so you might want to run that run that through hey charles has been patiently waiting with his hand up what's up charles uh, i just wanted to caveat since we're talking about outdated stuff let's also talk about what you shouldn't use um because You'll see, like, if you're in any of the Facebook groups, you know, people advertise, oh, I'll give you, you know, a free version of Elementor. Um, never use anything that's called a GPL license for something that's a paid product, um, because that is notorious for having security vulnerabilities and backdoors as well. Um, so just something to think about. Pretty much don't get anything off Facebook. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, the P, yeah, well, I mean, yeah, people discuss it there and other places. I mean, you may get on Fiverr, for example, and somebody may offer, you know, to, you know, update your website and they'll give you a GPL version of Elementor. Don't do it. Hey, see you later, Lance. Thanks for being here. Lance has got to take off. Um, I put something in the that might be useful for Hetty and Trish. Um, I recently put together a toolkit that's based on an audit that I uh, I don't do as much because they're very time consuming. But it's an it's an audit that I would do on websites um, 
different aspects of it. Uh, I've turned it into a lead magnet, but it could be handy, especially as you're looking at a website. You know, um, there was a few things that 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 popped up, like on Hetty's um, sequence website. You know, one of the things that you want to, and I've done websites for DNA research before, and you want to don't assume that everybody knows exactly what that means you know so you want to have you want to have your website be available to whomever you know and, and if the website isn't isn't readily identifiable you know so if if i cover up the the logo and I, don't, I can't really tell what the website is about that's kind of a red flag you want to you want to think in terms of there's more than one audience yes there's going to be somebody at a high level of competency in that particular industry but there's also going to be people at other levels and we 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 want to not pander to them but we want to cater to them to make sure that if they don't understand what sequencing is that um you know maybe we make it a little bit clearer that our that our imagery that our logo that our description that our calls to action uh, make it a little bit more obvious because nowadays people have the attention span of a goldfish and if they if they show up and they and they're confused they'll leave you know and it's better it's better to uh, to over explain than under explain and, and usually you can do it you can do it with with grace you know without having to be condescending as to you know, this is what dna research is you know i mean you can you can cater to those different audiences Magic will talk to me, buddy. Hey, so I another thing when checking a theme, this is something I encourage my clients to do is also like with you can read the change log when you before there's the update button. There's also like view details where you can see like what the bug, what the fixes are, what the changes are that that are going to be installed with the update with the version. And usually it's only, you know, like five things or less that that have been updated or changed. But even if you don't know exactly what everything they're talking about does, it's kind of like um it's useful like when I'm at like Valvoline having my oil changed, I like to kind of hear what they're talking about, even though I don't fully understand what's happening under the hood. Um, but I always encourage people to do that. And one thing that is also like somewhat deceptive in change logs is the marketing team. If they get their hands on the change log, they might like make a bug fix sound like a feature enhancement um, or like a security patch seem like a feature enhancement. I meant to do that. Yeah, yeah, they're like, um, you know, we we fixed our integration with this tool. It's like, no, you just fixed the security vulnerability when both tools are active and you're running that version. But, but you know, just reading, checking out the change log quality of the product is good too. And I always, you know, I mean, my business is literally based on helping people, um, you know, empowering people beyond their their current abilities. Right. Um, my my current business was literally founded on our the way you know wordpress my wordpress business was founded on on the phrase in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king um so i want to make sure that especially for the new people you know like eddie there there's a lot of moving parts you know so i don't want to discourage you uh, but there are some basics you know that you want to educate yourself on like vetting products you know be be well versed on the five star uh system make sure that that like i say i don't use anything less than four stars i'm i'm not interested there's a lot of products out there that, that are three stars and well there's a lot of three stars anything in two and one i won't you know i won't even look at it but i would stay away from it unless you have some absolutely burning reason to use a three star, you're you're well advised not to, you know. But also, you know, learn. Another basic is is that, the, you know, just because you can do it, doesn't mean you ought to, you know. Before you, uh, WordPress makes it real easy. Hey, just created a page, you know, or ju I just I just changed my main navigation. Take a breath, you know. Ask yourself, why am I doing this? Is it going to be improving the user experience? Am I am I making things simpler for for my various audiences? Because every website has at least most have three, at least two audiences. 
you know, and that's not even talking about the two basic audiences of bots versus human visitors. You know, those are that's the first dichotomy that we all deal with. But there's there's always you know, like I've got a lady that I'm, um, I'm hoping to work with who does turf installation, and you know, part of you know, so far she's only been thinking of the world in terms of of uh, you know home homeowners, you know, people who are gonna for some reason, well, you know, it's usually water mitigation or whatever, you know, take out their lawn or their, their landscaping and put it, <laughs> put in AstroTurf, Jesus. Um, have to have to come up with good reasons for something I'm fundamentally opposed to. But, um, you know, there's also people who are property managers. There are also people that, uh, that own chains of, um, of storage spaces, you know, and they might, they might uh, do well with their products. And you're always thinking in terms of who are my different audiences and am I, am I adequately catering to them? You know, Mike, Mike, oh, nice. I love that picture, by the way, that lighthouse. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I got it from uh, Unsplash Free Images. I love uh, it. On these themes, I neglected to point out another big reason why you want a modern theme, and then that is called responsiveness. So your modern themes, Astra, there it can be edited so they'll look good on mobile or an iPad or a desktop. Those older themes, they're, they're many years old. You try to look at them on mobile, they may probably not going to be a very good experience. And 65, 68% of all users on the web do it through mobile now. So you want to have a, uh, and most of these better themes, these new themes, it'll automatically make it look pretty good on uh, mobile, but you can just click to edit specifically for mobile so that it will, so the user experience is, uh, you know, it's a good experience for whoever comes to your site if they happen to be on mobile, not just desktop. Mm -hmm. I like, uh, by the way, I, uh, there's a, there's an extension that I've been using for years uh, called Resizer. Then you can add to Chrome, which makes it really easy. I mean, it comes with some stock breakpoints. Um, I'm looking at it. It's uh, it's kind of old, actually. It's it's the uh, I mean, although it's 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 been updated, but it's it has uh, breakpoints for iPhone five, iPhone six. What are we up to? Like, Chrome does it automatically with Inspector, and you can set points. You don't even need a plugin anymore. Yeah, but I mean, the average the average uh, user is not going to be using a lot of the developer tools, you know. But, uh, you know, it'll also give you 1024 by 768 and 1440 anyway, and you can create custom um, resolutions so you can at a, at, a, at a glance, you can just click on something and see, well, what does this site reconform to for, you know, for a laptop, for, for an iPhone, you know, and it, it can be really handy and that can answer the question because that, some of those older sites, I bet you anything like Mike is saying, you look at them on an iPhone and they're going to be pretty horrendous. You know, they're not going to have a clickable phone number. They're not going to, it's not going to have, um, you know, always think about somebody standing on the street corner, they're about to catch a cab and they've found your website. You know, are they going to be able to get to you right away on mobile? So, Eddie, did you have a question? Only a really stupid question. You're talking about stars. No, the only stupid question is a one <laughs> you <not> ask. <laughs> Where are these stars that we are talking about? I don't know what you're saying. Where are the stars that were the yeah, yeah. Well, anywhere that you can see plugins um, okay. in, in the in the appearance uh, in the plugins uh, section, you can search two ways plugins that you already have, or you can uh, look for plugins that are okay. in, in the With, WordPress. Within the WordPress universe. So you don't mean in Envato, you mean in the no, WordPress. No, no. Envato uses five stars as well. A lot, of, it's pretty much uniform. I mean, you go to okay. Amazon, you use five stars. Five stars has become pretty much the ubiquitous way to, to rate, okay. you know, so. Okay, but, uh, so wherever their ratings, universe. okay. Yeah. WordPress.org, they call that the repository. Repository. They rank based on users, both themes and plugins, but they're only the free versions in the repository. Right. Right. Uh -huh. WordPress.org is open source. It's all free. They don't let you host 
paid plugins there. But a lot of plugins will have a free version and a paid version. Same thing with themes. But in the repository, when you go to WordPress.org and you, there'll be a drop down menu and you want to look at a theme, click on theme, click on find it, it. And there'll be, there won't, there won't only just be reviews and five star or four or whatever. There'll be uh, support columns. People talk about issues they've had and solutions they've had. It's pretty robust. But if you're using a paid version, that won't be uh, rate ranked or rated in the repository. Yeah, it's it's a great free resource. Um, would you say, say though, a high rating in the repository for the free version would translate to a high rating in the paid version? I just put the link in there because now it's uh, WordPress.org slash main page. But anyway, you always want to have the codex bookmarked because that is kind of the all things WordPress. That's the Bible. Um, they're always yeah. changing it. In answer to your question, Heidi, th that tends to be the case, but it's not always. Okay. In fact, I've, there's been big problems with the paid versions that never showed up in the free versions because in the paid versions they're doing a whole lot more, and you start interacting, and then and, and then when it breaks. So, but typically you're getting better value with the paid version, and so if you're getting a pretty good rating with the free, you're probably going to get a, a better rating, you know. But it's it's subject to different sources uh, the wordpress.org is a uniform source for the entire wordpress community on the free free plugins it's a good place to start uh and for and, and looking at your websites right now uh, you're going to get most of what you need with free versions that are available uh, i don't know on your biotech thing where you're headed but it's still a, a pretty new website for the most part and uh until you need it I, I, you know the more things you lay in there the more complex the more reasons you'll be able to break later on so as I think Ed was saying, keep it simple. You know, you can do a lot with WordPress core now. Just make sure you have a modern block enabled theme and you're probably going to be 90%, 95% of the way there. Yeah, I definitely don't question. do as I say, don't do as I do, because uh, like I have, I have more plugins listed on there because I will actually test them on my website. You know, that's, that's the website that I use the, the most, you know, I have no way to have a, a, a proper testing environment. Um, that's as good as my own website. So I have a ton of plugins in there. Most of them deactivated, but uh, good, good uh, protocol for, for plugins is to make sure you need it first and um, get rid of it once you don't. You know, if you try something out and it doesn't do what what you need it to, get rid of it. You want to keep your list of plugins spare, clean. I I uh, agree with that totally. Like I um, have done a lot of troubleshooting, malware, cleaning, all this kind of stuff, and. Um, I log, log into a website like something's broken. It's like you have 80 plugins on there. I'm like, I don't know where to start here um, mm -hmm. <laughs> with, with figuring this out. So if you can keep it minimal, it, turning plugins on and off one by one to isolate problems is just so much easier. Well, and, and here's the situation for 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 Trish. Um, over the years, those of us who've been watching WordPress for a lot of years will notice that uh, themes will integrate, you know, there will be something that we used to need a plug in to to add a certain functionality or even styling. Which has now been integrated into the theme or a theme. Um, so a lot of a lot of plugins that used to be, you know, what I guess I'm saying is just revet your your plugins because you will find some of them that may have been useful in 2012 are no longer necessary and and actually may be a detriment to your performance and and possibly your security if it's something that is you you might find some plugins that were removed because if if uh if a plugin hasn't released an update in two years wordpress yanks them you know so you might find some of those you know Hey, I dropped a message. Uh, I have to get going. Does anyone have any questions before I hop off? Especially on on um, on ads, 
And uh, remember, Daryl's going to uh, have a great presentation for us next month on the 8th on Google ads and and uh, paid ads. So, you know, he's going to include some stuff on paid ads in general, but it will be a focus on Google. Yeah, this is all related. This comes up a lot. Anything you do in marketing crosses over into everything else. Eventually, you learn enough about everything, but at least figure out what the problem is and go to the expert to fix it. And WordPress and websites are a very common reason. Ads don't work. There's a strong chance it's the website. It's, it's hard to explain that sometimes because it sounds like an excuse, but. Well, this is where I get Sometimes it is. This is where I get to pop in with my hub model. You know, in, in my yeah. world, I had the, a, a really great website. A great website is the hub of your marketing, but you gotta have those spokes, you know, and one very important spoke is paid ads you know i mean on online success is basically a product of either time or money if you have a lot of money you don't have to invest a lot of time because you can delegate it to somebody like daryl or, uh, or even me uh, to to do some some of these folks but um if you if you're going to do it yourself you're going to put in time you know and a lot of people spend a lot of time getting not great at, at various aspects when it might have been better to, to spend your money on on delegating something out and, and working on it is what it is you do whether it's dna research or or engraving whatever whatever it is you know most of us spend way too much time working in our business and not enough time working on our business absolutely but Sometimes the best use of your time is to have somebody else take that task. So any more questions for Daryl before he heads off into the great white north? <laughs> Not tonight. Thank you. No. Thanks You're welcome. all of you for all you your put, uh, suggestions. I can put Daryl's website in the in the chat. So mm -hmm questions be here next month or ask him to all right i'll be back next month in the new year all right everyone awesome week uh it's not the I'll weekend to this week i'll talk to you thursday yeah all, all right, right bye thanks for being here all right well there's um is there a topic anybody would like to suggest or um uh well gosh i guess our other guys uh, Will, are there any topics that you would feel comfortable presenting at one of our meetings? Is there something that you have a particular uh, expertise or affinity for? Yeah, I guess um, I, basically all the websites I've been working on over the last like eight years are membership and course websites, like learning, um, kind of like, I, I'm not sure what um, kind of questions this group would have about about those topics. Sometimes I find when I give a presentation, um, I like to try to, you know, have have questions generated from the group. So I have a finger on the pulse of, of what we're trying to, to get into. But I'm, you know, I've got a lot of um, wide range of learning based stuff in WordPress. Um, set, um, do you mind putting your contact information in the uh, in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. You and I should talk. We need somebody to. Uh, we need somebody for March. Daryl's going to be doing something in January, as it stands. I'm probably going to be giving something WordPress slash marketing related in February. Um, so if you've got something having to do with, um, uh, you know, because a lot of us who are web developers, you know, we, uh, one of the ways that people create traffic is creating courses. You know, if you're going to do something twice, make it a course the first time. You know, if you can, that's one of the great ways, especially for, I'm constantly talking to people who have a, you know, inter, entrepreneurs are basically, a lot of times they're people with a particular expertise who want to monetize it for themselves. Maybe they were working for somebody else. And one of the great ways to, uh, if somebody has been doing something for many years is to courseify it. If that's even a word, you know, make a course out of it. And uh, 
So maybe you could give us a 30,000 foot view of uh, why that would be a, a good idea. Because uh, one of the things that I've gotten done for my clients is identify income streams they didn't realize they have. And one, right. of, the, one of the easy ones is consulting. You know, if, if you've been, sorry, if you've been doing something for 20 years, um, uh, you know, you can consult on that topic for, a, for, and it's not something you have to prepare for it. You're carrying it right up here so you can get in and troubleshoot and all that sort of stuff. Totally. Another one, which takes more work, but maybe you could help them bridge um, to, you know, getting good course creation uh, resources, how to monetize courses and uh, whether they're using, I got to imagine, you know, um, that whether somebody is using a teaching resource, uh, a, ter a teaching resource as a lead magnet, or if they're actually monetizing it. Because um, I have people that I follow on YouTube who've got hundreds of thousands of subscribers. They do a video one time and it continues to be relevant for years you know right yeah i have people uh reference my youtube videos and i don't remember having created them um like they're like oh you talked about this and i'm like i don't know and i go to google look something up and there's a picture of my face i'm like oh i guess at one point i knew about this um but yeah like there that thirty thousand view would be i think that'd be a great presentation about you know how do you take your expertise, turn it into a PDF, see a lot of downloads with those PDFs, then turn that into some like lightweight video content, see demand pick up in the video content, and then turn that into a course. The course can, if that has pick up, can become a community. And now your customers are getting value from your other customers. And it just creates this nice flywheel and recurring revenue with memberships and all that. There's a lot to dive what, into. What area of course creation would you say is your, is where you feel the most um, comfortable or most qualified? Um, primarily in the technical setup about how to think about, um, kind of working interaction into a WordPress website, um, because we think, uh, you know, a lot about displaying this, uh, content, displaying content on the blog. How do we think about, um, managing our website host when it comes to serving dynamic content and like, what is the onboarding look like when people click on your your ad, your uh, your Facebook ad, your Google ads converting at a high rate, getting a lot of people to view the page. How are we going to take them from there, add them to the email list, make sure all that data is in compliance with the way we want it to be, and we're kind of engaging that person and getting them involved in our business at a higher level. And we open their wallet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, cool. Um, well, yeah, let's definitely talk about that because, uh, you know, you think uh, you'd be interested in maybe giving uh, something like in March? Absolutely. You're about to be attacked by a cat, by the way. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I saw him. I was a little worried. He Sometimes he runs up and jumps on the chair and climbs on my shoulders. And I'm like, I did see that. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, Travis, did you have any, any questions that might not have gotten around to? No, no, not at this time. Um... The the only thing that I have uh, that I'm that I'm currently looking for is a, as a forms builder. Um, I have uh, what's called Caldera Forms, which is is lost support. I think two years ago, still works for me. I, I literally only have two forms on the website that I use. Um, so, just any recommendations of a forms builder? Uh, Fluent Forms. There's a free version. What is it called? Fluent, Fluent Forms. Fluent. There's a number of really God, I've, good. I've got I got WP Forms. I haven't tried it out yet. Um, and I, I read about Gravity. Ninja Forms is another one that a lot of people like. You yeah. know, um, again, you know, um, it's a good idea because the, the three that we've just mentioned have been around for quite a while. Um, and it's usually, even with stuff that's been around for a while, it's a good idea to revet them from time to time. I like WP forms by and large, but there's others that, that, that are perfectly good. Um, there have been an issue or two. Uh, I, li I like the simplicity of it. They're pretty good about trying to monetize past a certain point. 
of uh, complexity. So if you want, like I used a, a, a form for years, SI simple contact form that was great for years. And then one day the, the developer sold it and the guy who bought it started putting adware on there. And next thing you know, WordPress yanked it and this really robust I haven't run across anything better or as as good for free, you know, since, but somebody ruined it, you know. Uh, but yeah, all that have been mentioned, Ninja, Gravity, yeah. LP Forms. Uh, Gravity Forms is generally considered to be the Cadillac of them all, but it's expensive. You, you pay extra for that one. Uh, yeah, I was uh, back last night looking through, you know, depending on where you look, it, it, you know, if you search, you know, best forms for WooCommerce. Yeah, they have, it'll do everything. There's all sorts of extensions, but it, it's paid. Yeah. Uh, Ninja Forms has had a bunch of security problems over the last year. Uh, WP Forms is, is okay, but it's limited in the free version. Uh, Contact 7 was used to be the big one, but it is so bloated and it is so long in the tooth. I, I'd stay away from that one. Um, Blue and Forms, you get the most in the free version. But, and, but it has a paid version too. And there's another one out there that I don't think it's free. It sounds like what you, you it doesn't sound like you need a whole lot. No, no. I, I and then, you know, because I so simple, I, 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 at this point, I stay away from the paid versions because I, I just don't need those, those uh, features. Well, I've used the free Ninja and the free WP uh, forms and they're okay. They're just a little bit limited in what they do. Uh, but the higher end developers, recommend fluent forms a lot so you may check it out I'll take a look thank you yeah, fluid. remember also high level developers some often like them because they have a more complicated interface it allows them to do more which may not be what a, a more um, a less experienced user wants sometimes a less experienced user wants a simpler interface you know so you can drag and drop your way there more quickly you know i mean that's one of the reasons why wordpress is as successful as it is it's there are other cmss um even some that developers tend to like more because it has more buttons and, bell and bells you know but that may not be what you need you might need simplicity but that you can download free versions of all of them, you know, try them. Yeah, a lot of them had, you know, 14 days free type thing. Um, so I, I was reading. Most of them will give you a free, you don't have to do the the premium version, you know. For If I can do something for free, I prefer to do that, you know, if I, so Absolutely. download them, try the free version, you know, the, maybe just create a create yourself a, a simple contact form or whatever the your your main form is on your website you know once you start getting into engraving and stuff like that you're going to have a lot of custom fields and and um and that's on well, those i don't use forms for that for the engraving you know so when customers are ordering that customized stuff i use uh i use what's called a ppom uh, personalized product manager uh, something like that okay. um and I just uh, currently started using this fancy product designer, which, which I actually bought that plugin for four some odd years ago. Um, and it didn't do what I needed it to do. So I just ignored it. And a couple of weeks ago, I looked at it again and started digging in. And you know, the, the guy who, who uh, writes it, he's constantly doing upgrades. So, you know, what you were all talking about earlier about the plugins and how well they're maintained. Um, this guy seems to be right on top of it. And uh, now that's, I have the features that I need. That's and, one of the good things about a good development team. A good development team will be responsive. They will add features. They will listen to their users and not only fix their flubs, but they'll also listen to people who say, hey, you know, it would be nice if we, you know, if we could do this and then they'll just Next yeah. and then I, I look through his change logs and you know and if somebody says hey i need it to do this or that and you know another revision or two you know hey do we do this now so you know um, i'm actually really pleased with it it took me a long time to figure it out it's a pretty complex uh, yeah. thing but i've 
got a good handle on it now. Well, I think this is probably a good place for us to end our time together. Uh, what was Carol Burnett's thing? Um, <laughs> yeah, wasn't it this thing? <laughs> I'm so glad we had this time together. Uh, thanks for being here. Remember, next week or next uh, month on the 8th, we're going to have uh, Daryl teaching us about uh, paid ads. I think that's one that we're, all of us can use. So save the chat. Um, I will put up the um, the video of our session if there is anything. I don't think we got terribly technical on anything, but if you want to revisit anything, it'll be in the uh, in the chat on Meetup. Okay. All right, guys. All right. Good night, everybody. Good seeing you. As always, Mike, thanks for being here, man. Thanks. That was great. Good night, you guys. Take right. care. Good night.